Welcome back to DallasDivasDerby.com. In this segment of our interview with Morgan Brittany, we discuss the high seasons of Dallas and how upgrades to writing, fashion, direction, and production design all came together to create some of the most memorable and controversial seasons of the original series. Enjoy. Well, you mentioned you mentioned the eyes and the look of Maleficent, yeah. and, I, and I've heard yeah. you talk about, yeah, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is kind of the uh, creation and evolution and input you had in Catherine's look. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I think in one interview you were quoted as saying that, I think it was Larry Hagman, says he was shooting a scene and he's like, I just, those eyes, <laughs> he, he was did. just completely... He forgot his lines yeah. because he said, I can't remember what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> he used to say, I had wolf eyes. Wolf eyes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm crazy. looking into the wolf eyes. So as you worked with your makeup artist, I mean, did you talk about that? Was that, was that your idea yeah, or their it, idea? It, it was, was just kind it, of a... It was uh, Sue Cabral. She did my makeup for mm -hmm. all those years. And uh, Sue actually created the eye makeup that I wore, mm -hmm. which was, it, it was pretty heavy. I mean, mm -hmm. back in the 80s, we wore an awful lot of eye makeup. But it was, it was definite, you know, the definition and the dark, the really dark around right. the, the eyes, which is completely against what you're really supposed to do. You're not supposed to line dark because it makes your eyes smaller. Well, it didn't for me. All it right. made my right. eyes bigger. Right. And then we worked with the uh, camera operator and the camera crew and the DP to put a small eye light on the top of the lens for mm -hmm. my close-ups that would just, I you know, yeah. just come in and just pop, you know. So it was kind of a you know, it was kind of a group effort that we that we did that. Sure. But the creation of character uh, of uh, Catherine's look, I wanted to um, kind of bring back the 1940s sort of Joan Crawford, Betty Davis, powerful woman, classic look, and that's why I asked to wear the hats. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so yes, you you brought the hats to Catherine. I did. I they were they were very tentative about doing it because mm -hmm. no one had really worn hats on the show, and it wasn't kind of a Dallas thing. And I said, please, guys, let me let me just try it. And I mm -hmm. think the very first time. I was walking down the street with JR in front of his building yes. and I'm wearing a black hat and, and a blue, blue dress. dress and I think that was one of the very first times and you know everybody was afraid oh it's going to shadow your face it's going to take away from and, and the DP finally said no 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 I can work around it we'll figure it out we'll, we'll work it out and from that moment on it was all about the hats. And what Catherine, you know, what kind of hat she's yes. going to wear, what kind of look. And then it went to the turbans and it went to the whole thing. So yeah. that kind of created that look for me, yeah. which I wanted something that was was going to be different. Yeah. And I, in, in researching the website and going back through the old footage and the old stills, mm -hmm. one thing that, that I find... When you take those stills out of context, if you just pull stills of you and some of the other actresses during that period you could be looking at a 1940s movie. Oh, it, yeah. It, you know, people joke about the big hair and the shoulder pads of the 80s, and, and I think that came into play later in a more accentuated, maybe over-the-top sort of a right, way. Right, right. But during the middle years of Dallas, there was real elegance, real classic, timeless elegance. And when it you look sure at them was. now, I think if you showed them to an objective audience and said, tell us when this occurred, they might guess, you know, the 40s That's and not true. the 80s. That's you know, very true. It's, 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 it, the look holds up over time yeah, very well. Yeah, it, it did. It, it, it really gave that show a distinctive look mm -hmm. as well. And you noticed that Dynasty copied yes, us. Yes, yes. <laughs> they did. And, uh, you know, it was, Dallas was, was very, uh, very smart about that. So, and that gets into a couple of questions about the middle years of Dallas. Um, my personal theory, and fans all have their own theories mm -hmm. and their own favorite seasons, but I think in rewatching it, there seems to be kind of an artistic and creative zenith that occurs maybe around, you know, seven to nine, season seven to mm -hmm. nine, maybe arguably a year in either direction of that, where you see an upgrade in the cinema cinematography. You see the mm -hmm. sets being slightly mm -hmm. upgraded right. and expanded. You see the wardrobe being upgraded. Right. Some of the writing, you know, the focus of our site is, is the women of Dallas. Some of the writing around the female characters becomes the strongest Absolutely. that it ever was in the run of the show. Um, and also for two seasons, although I think only one that you were in, I think uh, Trevia came in as yes, the costume designer in season eight. He did. 
um, by then you'd already established sort of Catherine's mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. How did, did you have conversations with him about expanding that? I mean, that's when, I think that was the season where like the turban came into play. Right, and, right. And it was like everything that you were already doing, but just taken up, you know, an expense. Just up one more yeah, notch. And, and, yeah. And, yeah, it would kind of just up one more notch. Did you have a dialogue with him about I did, that? I did. And he, he used to love to outfit me because he said I reminded him of the Jean Tierneys and the Jean mm -hmm. Cranes of the 1940s. Mm -hmm. And he used to love that and he loved the look that I'd already started. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to expand on that. And mm -hmm. then he also did the same thing for Linda and you could see it, you could just see it. You it was see. such such an amazing um, difference. It mm -hmm. really was. It wasn't like the down home Texas ranch yeah. anymore yeah. it was it was up a notch now i don't know whether that had to do with dynasty or not because we we were definitely in competition with them mm -hmm. that was the weekly conversation right. <laughs> who's number one this week well, you i was going to ask you how 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 acknowledged was that on set? Oh, it was hilarious. Yeah. We'd go to the makeup room and, you know, the, the ratings would come out in the LA Times. I think it was on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And we'd be sitting in the makeup room and everybody'd get the newspaper and go, we beat them again! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so it was, it was kind of like a game. Sure. And, um, you know, it just, it, it got to be a real rivalry because we could, Larry would say, did you see what they did? They stole that from us. And, <laughs> I mean, it, it got to be very, very funny, sure. but it was. I mean, we were the two. We were battling for position, Absolutely. you know. And, um, so it seems like it, season seven is one of those years where the look really becomes richer. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's kind of in the middle of that, that upping the ante in terms of artistic quality. Was there a change in uh, uh, cinematographer, director of photography that year? Yes, there was. Uh, they brought in a new cinematographer who was very cutting edge named Brad May. And Brad had a whole different way of lighting. He lit very naturally. Now, you can imagine Hollywood had been using arc lights and nine lights and all mm -hmm. the very, very harsh lighting, a lot of shadows. And Brad was using natural lighting, soft lighting. So when we actors would walk on set the first day, it was like, uh, are you sure you're going to be able to see us in this? <laughs> and he kept telling everyone, he said, don't worry, you're going to love it. You're going to love the way you look. And I've, uh, it did give the show such a different quality, such a, another kind of texture, yeah. I think. It was lush. It, it was really lush. lush. I mean, the darks were dark. There were great shadows. And going back to what you were saying earlier about the lighting of the eyes, absolutely, the, the contrast level was great. It was, and it, and it added some realism. Even though you know most of those sets were interior sets on sound stages, they suddenly felt more real. It suddenly felt more on location. Absolutely, and he knew how to make women look beautiful. Yeah, that was the one thing. <laughs> when when Brad May was behind the camera, he knew how to make women beautiful. That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I think those are just the most rich and most beautiful years of the show, yeah. or those middle years. I'll never forget so. there was one shot of um, Victoria Principal. I swear, her, fa her skin looked like velvet. Mm -hmm. She looked flawlessly beautiful. And I mean, it would take your breath away. Same thing with Priscilla. Mm -hmm. When I saw it on, on screen, uh, I, I just, it was amazing mm -hmm. really amazing so yeah it did give it a different quality so in addition to brad may it sounds like uh, trevilla also knew how to uh, make a woman look beautiful absolutely <laughs> absolutely trevilla was one of those one of those designers who when you walked in the room to meet him for the first time he could visualize what you would look best in what colors you looked best in what style would would benefit you the most. Mm -hmm. And it's such a gift that that he had. It was, you know, Nolan Miller had it, Bob Mackey had it. Mm -hmm. It's something that they just intuitively know. And they can look at a woman, they can look at a man, and they can say, I know exactly. And that is such a brilliant talent. It is a it talent. It really yeah. is a talent. But we were, we were so fortunate to have Trevia on the show. Well, and so interesting that the overlap, that those artistic, uh, that those artists were brought in at the same time, each I upping know. the ante in their given, you know, profession. That's right. So all That's of a sudden, right. Dallas's quality between you all as the cast and the, the, the technical crew and the costuming, it all just kind of 
became a little bit more elevated there. It did, and and if you look at at uh, the world as a whole back mm -hmm. then, in those years, mm -hmm. it was the same thing with society. Mm -hmm. Everything was, you know, very, very glamorous. Everything was all about be getting better right. and, and, you know, aspirations. And, and it, it, it really was, it reflected what society was going through at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very interesting. You're right, it kind of upped the ante, but Boy, those were, those were great years. They yeah. really were great years. Looking at Dallas from an actor's perspective is a question I've been dying to ask. Okay. Um, you and, and other cast members of the show, what I, what I often witness from a fan point of view is, um, you know, whether it be uh, in a live situation or in an interview, you know, there are us diehard fans. We've watched it a million times, and right. uh, we we know things inside and out probably more than we should. And I, mm -hmm. you guys get a lot of very specific questions about plot points or characters or right. things like that. And what I've I've had discussions with other fans where they're so frustrated. Why doesn't this person remember that scene that I love oh. so much or what you know? And as I thought about it more. I'm curious to hear your perspective. I know it's kind of a broad question, but just even from my rudimentary understanding, you all are, are being given scripts either in whole or in part, mm -hmm, depending mm -hmm. on plot twists. Mm -hmm. You inevitably film scenes that end up on the cutting room floor. Right. Um, things are kept from you. You're in a cast of several dozen people. <laughs> right. You're not in scenes with all of them, so you probably are not aware right. you know, oh, of yeah. what everybody's doing. That's right. Um, how do you feel when, when a fan asks you one of those specific questions? And I, I'd just like to hear you talk a little bit about what it is like from your perspective working on the show. Do you know at the beginning of the year, like, Catherine's going to do this this year? And in January, she's going to be here. And in May, she's going <laughs> to do this. You know, do you know where it's going? How far in advance? No, no yeah. you really don't. Yeah. You, you would get your script on a certain day of the week for the next mm -hmm. episode. <laughs> the funniest <laughs> thing we would do. <laughs> Really, the funniest thing, everybody would get their script and they'd go to the last page. Whew, I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the thing. Made it through another week. Okay. And, you know, it was, it was very funny. It became a standing joke on set because, you know, you never really knew. You didn't know if, um, I mean, one of the, I think it was one of the producers on the show was infamous for having produced a soap opera, I believe, I, I hope I'm getting this right, mm -hmm. where the cast of the soap opera decided en masse that they wanted a pay raise and they were all going to stand up for that pay raise and if you fire one, you have to fire all. Oh, wow. <laughs> in the middle of the show, he put them all in a bus and ran them over a cliff. <laughs> so we're all kind of going, oh, we made it, you know. Right. But, it, you know, you're right. Um, a lot of times we didn't even know what was happening in the other storylines. Mm -hmm. Many, many times. I mean, I can't even count, I probably can count on one hand the, the amount of scenes I had with um, Linda Gray, with Sue Ellen. Right. Hardly anything. Right. And if I missed the show or I was out on a publicity tour and I couldn't see it, and I missed a lot of shows, I didn't really know what was happening or what was going on with the other storylines. And you're right, you know, we, we had so many things and so many plot twists and all that throughout the years that we really can't remember everything. And that's the most exciting thing for a lot of us now is when we look at the DVDs and we're reliving it and going, oh my gosh, I oh, that's right, that happened. Right. You know, and it's really fun for us because it's things that, we didn't pick up on the first time or we didn't remember or it's like a lot of the clips you put in Dallas Divas I went oh my gosh I remember that now <laughs> you know and and it's it's um I wish we you know a lot of us I'm sure probably should be more up on on the trivia and everything that that is in the show but I don't you know. know that it's a should. I just think it's an observation in watching, you know, as I heard, as I heard more and more actors interviewed and sort of have similar responses. You right. Know, I thought, you know, there's a reason for this. It's not that they weren't paying attention. Oh, it's no, that, it's that no. their experience with the story and the 
production process right. is very different than our it's experience. It's way different. We see the finished product, right, right, you know, and we can right. see it a million times in a row. And you know, yeah, and they're watching it. They're watching it as a, as a part of their life. I mean, we became a part of people's lives mm -hmm. for many years. We really did. People sat down in front of the television set, and they didn't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times for us, we're portraying those characters, and we're we're very much removed from if we were just an observer right. watching. Right. So we're kind of in a different place than the fans are. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Well, that's uh, that. I wanted to ask you that question because I wanted to then uh, dive into some specific uh, okay. so, uh, memories and, and story arcs for, of Catherine. Um, and of course, you know, I have to ask the question that that you probably get asked a lot. You know, your 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 major scenes and the people you worked most with were Larry Hagman, mm -hmm. Patrick Duffy, Ken Kerchival, Victoria Principal. Mm -hmm. um, any anecdotes stand out? I mean, we've all heard the stories about them being pranksters oh, and, yes, and jokesters yes. on the set. Um, just just that you know you, I was if you can imagine, I was thrown into the show. I mean, basically you're walking into a hit show with a family of people mm -hmm. that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so it's very scary the first couple of days that you're on set, right. you know. And I didn't know these people. I didn't know what they were going to be like. But I soon learned. I mean, Larry is just, you know, he's so funny. Patrick, jokester all the time. But they did they took very great care in the very beginning to make sure that we were, you know, that I was comfortable mm -hmm. with the character. And I, and then they would joke around the more comfortable we got and the more I got into the character, then it became, you know, gag real time, <laughs> right. you know, which, which, yes, which you've seen, seen yes, right? Yes, on the DVD extras, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's good. But, but basically it was such a professional group of actors that we could do a run through for lighting and camera and joke around and do whatever we wanted to do and then boom just like that you are right on spot on into your character and mm -hmm. that was the great thing about that show yeah you could play because everyone was so professional oh yeah, yeah. everybody knew who they were so well that nobody was no nobody had any problem at all just immediately jumping right into their character that's fantastic yeah so how was it um uh working with Victoria in the sense that, you know, she's a long established character. Right. Your character has been brought on basically to tear her world apart, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. You know you, I mean, if you look at Dallas, as you always hear the, you know, the story of how Dallas was conceived of as Romeo and Juliet originally yeah, with the yeah. Barnes and the, and the Ewings and Pam and oh, Bobby. Yeah. And here you are tearing our Romeo and Juliet apart. Like, how, oh, how I is... know, I know. I used to apologize to her all the time. I said, I'm so sorry, I'm doing this. Um, some of the scenes that we had together where I was just so, just so nasty behind her back, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I'd turn away from camera and you could just see this evilness, you mm -hmm. know, and she didn't have a clue. <laughs> and I, th and I, I just thought, oh, I hate being so mean to you. You know, this is that people are going to hate me. Right. And, and it was, um, it was just, you know, that was a fact. That's the way it was. And I knew that. Mm -hmm. I knew when the storyline was going that way that the reaction was going to be really negative with the public. Yeah, so I've heard that yeah. you've had, you had some run-ins. I did. did. I had run-ins. I lost uh, endorsements, commercial endorsements. Really? Yeah, because they sponsored the show and they said, People don't trust you. They don't like you. And it's like, whoa, wait wow. a minute. But I'm a different person. <laughs> right. it's like I'm an actress. <laughs> yeah. It, wow. it became, people became very, um, you know, they, they became very intertwined with those characters. And they loved Pam and Bobby. Yes. Don't. I mean, I was yeah. in the grocery store and this lady just rammed her card into mine and she said, don't mess with Pam and Bobby. I'm like, whoa, the writers make me do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. But wow. it's, oh yeah. The, the, the oh yeah. Not able to quite separate it sometimes. And, yeah. and the, some of the mail. Oh, and let yeah. me tell you something. Talk about fan mail. Okay. <laughs> I got 99% of my fan mail was wonderful. People were just awesome to mm -hmm. me. <laughs> that I would get. I was very big on death row. <laughs> oh, oh no! I used to get letters from 
<laughs> mass murderer, you know, I killed my wife and this and that, and I just really admire you. <laughs> Could you please send me a picture from my cell? <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? I knew when the, when the letters would come from CBS and it would have a number on the side. <laughs> Catherine Wentworth was very big with the with the prisoners. <laughs> wow, that I Isn't love that, that. Funny? that's fascinating. Isn't that funny? Wow. I did. I'd get wow. long letters, you know, I admire what you do. You're exactly you're my kind of woman. You know? <laughs> it's like, whoa. Like, thanks, but no. <laughs> thanks, thanks, but yeah, really. Um, one of the one of the actresses and the characters, I have to admit, that that my even as a you know, as a fan since I was a kid and I watched but, but that I gained a new level of appreciation for in working on Dallas Divas Derby was Audrey Landers' yes. Afton. And yes. I know that even during the, the Derby, when you and I were tweeting and we were corresponding, yeah. you expressed that, you know, you really loved Afton oh, and, yes. and, and Audrey. And, and I remember when I first put her bio together for the site, uh, I, you know, I was trying to keep everything concise. Trying, it's 14 seasons of uh, I know, I know. And the, the nugget that I took away from it is Afton very often, especially later in her run, often was the only one speaking the truth in the room, but no one would listen to That's her. That's right. And That's right. some of the biggest moments where she did that were around you. Mm-hmm. She would I warn know it. she would warn Cliff about you, she would warn Pam about you. Mm -hmm. She was just, mm -hmm. you know, she was she was letting the world know and no one was listening Nobody to her. Nobody listened to her. Was, it it that was very interesting. I caught on to that. A, a lot in her dialogue, you mm -hmm. know, and, and she got dismissed. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like, was it because of, of where she came from? Was right. it because she wasn't considered, what, like the Ewings? She right. wasn't she in was their- a different class. Exactly. Yeah. Was that why she was dismissed, but yet she spoke the truth? Mm -hmm. And I think Catherine knew she spoke the truth. Yes, there was some, there was a few scenes oh, at, yeah. at Cliff Barnes' oh, apartment, yeah. some confrontational scenes where oh, yeah. where, where uh, Afton steps up mm -hmm. pretty directly to Catherine. Absolutely, and, and she defended him. Yeah, you know, we, this was what we were talking about before, where the women, in in a certain you know block of seasons, became mm -hmm. very strong mm -hmm. and very uh, outspoken and really, really ran the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it, it, it did become that way for a while mm -hmm. and could stand up to the men one to one. I mean, even Pamela stood mm -hmm. up to Jr. you know, and, and you wouldn't see that in the early episodes. It's true. It seemed an evolution. Yeah. And, and my personal take was the show became richer for it. It did it, become it, it, richer for it, it, it. But you're right. Yeah. Afton was a very interesting character and I think Audrey had a lot to do with that mm -hmm. she really did it, yeah you, you really when you rewatch it especially now with the you know the the aid of DVDs or, or watching online and you can watch a block of episodes mm -hmm. in a row mm -hmm. Afton's one of those characters you're like wow she's she really evolves and, and then right. she really steps up but I loved those scenes I think it was it was kind of climaxing around the time that Catherine was losing it mm -hmm. and it was soon mm -hmm. before Afton left she, and yeah. she walked out on Cliff. Right. But she, and I think, you know, one of the reasons is she was kind of tired of not being listened to. Oh, sure. <laughs> she, she, sure. But yeah. because I always wanted secretly, I mean, as much as I loved Catherine, mm -hmm. I wanted Afton, I wanted someone to listen to her. I know. <laughs> you know? I know. <laughs> and to prove her, I mean, the audience, I think, could see that she was Absolutely. right. And the audience was saying, listen to her. <laughs> she said, can't you see what's going on? Yeah. And that was, yeah, that yeah. was part of so it. So did you guys have fun doing we those did. confrontational scenes. We did, yeah. and she is so lovely. Yeah. She really is one of the one of the most lovely actresses that oh, I've worked great. with. She is. Yeah, well, it was really, talk to her. I, I, I <laughs> Aspen, or Audrey, if you're out there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We'd love to talk to you at Dallas Divas Derby, and uh, and but those scenes were fun to watch. I they mean, with they the were two fun to do. Um, yeah. So we, we've we've jumped in and out of season seven uh, as an expressed favorite of mine, and I think you've expressed in the past that it's one of yours. It's the season where Pam and Bobby are separated. Pam's living in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. Catherine's mm -hmm. working her magic <laughs> every week. Like, she's exactly. just on it with JR. Her and JR are sort of running the show. Yeah. And, and nobody yep. really knows for most of that season. Right. Um, was there a point in... Because there's a point in that, I think it occurs in that season, where there's a window of time when we think Catherine might end up with Bobby. Uh-huh. And I don't, I'm curious to know, was that, 
you all messing with us? Was that the right? Was that was that what you wanted the audience to think? Did you want us to be afraid of that, or or was there a time when the writers were actually thinking, you know, maybe that would be an interesting couple? I think they wanted to. I think they wanted to put it out there as far as they could put it. Right. But never let Catherine get what she really wanted. Okay. I think that was it. Like, like make her think mm -hmm. that she was going to finally win and she was going to finally get what she wanted. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, Bobby was supposed to still be the smartest guy in the room, basically. Mm -hmm. The nicest guy in the room. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't ever really go for her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So I think it was kind of a tease, like you're saying, how far are they going to let this go? Mm -hmm. But I don't think they ever had any intention of okay. ever letting them get together. I was curious about that. Yeah. Because you did a so. good job of convincing us that it might happen. Yeah, and he and he almost fell for it. Yeah, he warms to her for he a while. He does. He almost fell for it. Yeah. But I think that they, they pull back. And isn't that when they brought Jenna? Well, the, yeah, Jenna then way Jenna back? starts becoming a factor. Right, it's like right. you're just about the time you get rid of Mark Grayson. Yeah, just about. <laughs> and Holly Harwood tried yes, to get in there. Yes, and, yes. you know, one of my favorite scenes, I think, was when I'm sitting having lunch with Bobby and Holly comes in. And she, I'm just like, oh, you can just tell. Like, who are you? I'm <laughs> so glad you brought up that scene because I love that scene. I love that it's scene. It's shot outdoors. You guys yeah. are eating lunch somewhere. And mm -hmm. Holly, this is after Holly's already caused the car accident. Yep. She's sort of done her mea culpa to Bobby. She's right. trying to get back in his good graces. That's right. And right around the time when you're like, I finally got him. That's right. And then she shows. And he, Catherine is not oh, no. happy. <laughs> no, she's not happy. And you can just see the 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 sparks going between me and um, Lois yes, in that yes. scene. And it was, it was really fun. I love Lois Childs. I she, do too. She, she did a great <laughs> she job. She did a great She's, job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it, that's a fun but scene. But it was, it was great when we would do scenes, you know, we'd do scenes together like that. And it would be like, did you win or did I win? <laughs> 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 Which one of us won that right, one? You, you don't know, know yet. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was great fun. Oh, that's great. So in season seven, um, as all of these Machiavellian <laughs> yeah. things are going on. Catherine's kind of running the show from behind the scenes. When did you become aware uh, that Catherine would shoot Bobby? Uh, I really did not know because they had three of us do it. Okay. They had three of us do the scene mm -hmm. and none of us knew mm -hmm. which one it was going to be until it aired. Okay, because I've heard that similar story around the shooting of JR. It's the and way they it, did it. Yeah, I was going to ask you if they did it similarly. They did it the same way, so, and so we really didn't know. So did you? Did that season wrap and air before you knew? Because it was resolved in the next season. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. you? Did that all end and you still weren't sure? Oh, yeah. Oh. We didn't know. We went on hiatus, went off and did our own thing. People would ask us. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Right. You know, I have no idea who did it. I don't know. But I mean, I, I kind of had a hint that it might be, you know, mm -hmm. because there were the, really the other people really didn't have that much of a motive. But, sure. you know, you never know because they could have they could have gone off any way they wanted. Well, they did a nice job of, of you know, playing off the original J.R. shooting. Yeah. But it yeah. was a double mystery because it occurred in JR's office. I know. So there was a question I of know. Who, who's the shooter, but who was the shooter intending to shoot? Exactly. So that opened the door exactly. to a lot of, yeah. It was so, very, very smart on, yeah. the, on their part and had people talking a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun. I remember, you know, Bobby falling out of the chair and every, that was such yep. a huge thing. You know, I know. Because it was JR's office. It was JR's office. <laughs> so that's, that leads us into season eight, which was uh, 1984-85. Uh-huh. Um, you begin the season, uh, I think Catherine's in four episodes in the beginning of that season mm -hmm. as the who shot Bobby mystery right. is sort of played out. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's tossed around, Catherine shows up, she's visiting him in the hospital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, I think one of those scenes is the turban scene. I think so, yes, that's I, right. I think there's a great scene with you and Charlene Tilton. Yeah. Where you go to visit Bobby. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. She has a bad sense of you. And yeah. she's like, I'm going to 
she, she kind of lets it know that she's not going to leave you alone with that's him. Right. That that's, that's right. That's right. Oh, my gosh. I think that is the turban scene, actually. I think that's yeah. when you were in that. Uh, yeah. Did you have many memories? You didn't probably, I don't think you worked too much with Charlene. No, I didn't. Yeah. No, I but, didn't. Uh, but that's a great the scene. The barbecues and the ba uh, oil baron's ball. Yeah. Usually we'd all get yeah. together, yeah. And just as an aside, I've heard other actors talk about that. We all as fans, I think it's very common for us to love those barbecue scenes and the balls because you're all together and there's like 17 <laughs> stories going right, on at once. Right. I've heard some other actors say that those are really not the most fun to shoot. They're not. They're yeah. very they're very difficult to do. Yeah. They really are. Just Especially the barbecue because it was usually over 100 degrees and the humidity in the summertime at South Fork was just unbearable. You know, mm -hmm. So you're constantly changing clothes because you're perspiring through everything you've got on and I mean it 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 was really really difficult those scenes were were very hard to do I would imagine a lot of setups too a, a lot, lot of setups just, yeah. a lot of setups a lot of camera work mm -hmm. yeah yeah well as fans we appreciate that you did them because they everyone <laughs> let you know all the fans oh yeah everybody's those. there together yeah, yeah. And, and oftentimes you know a lot of ground is covered plot wise because sure. you have everyone in the same room for that's a minute. right um, that's right and uh, speaking of that i just have to toss this out because i have to say one of the impetuses in my in my own evolution in getting a dallas divas derby up and running was finding that oil baron's ball scene uh that, oh, that was we're great. in the powder room, the ladies' yes, powder room scene. It was it's great. it's uh, Linda Gray, Victoria Principal, Audrey Landers, Priscilla, Priscilla Presley, and you. <laughs> yes, that is just oh, classic. That and is. It was our cat fight scene. Yeah. Oh, I know it. We loved that. Did you guys have fun? We with had that? so much fun with that. It was great. And it's really all about Bobby. Oh yeah. I mean, it's all about Bobby. Yeah, like three of the three of you are, you know. <laughs> yeah, but see. Weren't we elegant then? Absolutely. We handled it so well. Think about now. It'd be the bad girls club, right? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> They'd be throwing each other down the absolutely. stairs. You know, I kind no, of... we were so elegant. I actually appreciated that. Again, I'm not knocking Dynasty. I'm a fan. But, you know, Dynasty in those fights got into brawls and fights. Oh, I know they and, did. I and, know they did. And when I pulled that scene out and showed it to friends and then we, we aired it on the site, a lot of fans wrote and said, I either forgot about that scene or I didn't know that that scene existed yeah. and they love it. Oh yeah, because I know it, it. It's such a, it's, again, it's one of those scenes where you're all together, but it's restrained. It's it is. Tense, but but it's, it's, restrained. it's restrained. And you, they got the message across. Oh, Every one of those characters yeah. did. And it was done, see, there again, mm -hmm. the writers took it back mm -hmm. to the throwback to the way the 40s, like the women, mm -hmm. the film yes. The Women, yes. where you can have that back and forth, but it's still classy. Yeah. And it's still, you know, you get your point across, right. but you don't have to be blatantly obvious and throw each other and pull hair and all that. Right, you right. don't have to. Right. And I like that so much better. Yeah. So much better. I, get, I gained a, a brand new appreciation for that yeah. scene. Because so, and so much is accomplished. Oh, so I mean, much. It's, it's, it, that, I think, is when Catherine first really becomes aware of Jenna. Oh, yeah. Because leading up to that, you're asking Cliff, who is this person? Where'd she come from? What's her story? You Why know? is she here? Why is she yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. kind of where that starts. That's right. Um, um, so as we go into season eight and they're resolving the mystery, um, and you guys start shooting season eight, mm -hmm. when were you notified that, hey, you're the one, you're the shooter? Um, I'm trying to remember when they, oh, I think they were telling me, because see, at that point, I think I was hired to do another series mm -hmm. yes that was i was glitter. hired by aaron spelling to do glitter and that was the very first time that an actress had done crossover not only two series at the same time but two different networks mm -hmm. and so that was a big negotiating deal but i remember that they told me look we're going to have you we're going to allow you to go and do your other show mm -hmm. because we're going to work the storyline this way you've shot Bobby so we're going to resolve that and we're going to run it up to another story point mm -hmm. which gave me the opportunity to go and do my other show okay so I think that's when I knew I knew I had done that I didn't know how they were going to resolve it because at that point I didn't know Patrick wanted to leave the show I see see I found that out later see that's what I was curious I was curious about going into um, that season 
you know, you've been a contract player, you've been right. a, bi a big player yeah. in terms of in a grand number of episodes. Right. And then, and then all of a sudden they're like, well, we're going to do four, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. Catherine's going to go away for a while. Right. And, but it sounds like that was just perfectly dovetailing into your, it your was. taking the glitter it, job. It was, because yeah. they knew there was no possible way I could fly to Dallas and work, and sure. we were shooting a lot of the stuff in Dallas, and then, you know, doing a 12-hour day on glitter, because I was the main character on glitter, right. so I was, it was very intensive. But I really, I mean, the confusing part in Dallas came when they called me and said, Patrick wants to leave the show and you're going to have to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, what does that mean? So that kind of threw me, you know, it, it really just kind of blindsided me like, what? And Lenny Katzman called mm -hmm. me, you know, and he said, so here's the deal. It's a Romeo and Juliet kind of thing where if I can't have him, nobody can have him. Uh, you're going to die together. Patrick wants to go his separate way and do whatever. And I said, why me, Lenny? <laughs> why do I have to do it? I said, it's going to follow me the rest of my life. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, right. And he said, no, 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 you have to do it. You're the bad guy. And I said, okay, all right, whatever. I said, well, what are we going to do? And he said, well, we're going to have you you know, you, you've been gone, and we've seen this blonde from the mm -hmm. behind, you know, behind, right. and we don't know who it is exactly, but we're gonna have you run him over with mm -hmm. a car and kill him, and you're gonna die at the same time. And I went, okay, well, that's all right then. And at, the, at that point, I said, that's okay, because by the time we ended up shooting that, that uh, death scene, mm -hmm. I was seven months pregnant. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So I knew that they had told me, oh yeah, have your baby do whatever, no problem. But I mean, behind the wheel of the car, I'm like, you know, nobody <laughs> yeah, knew that. Trench coat yeah, or nobody yeah, knew yeah. that, but yeah. I was. Yeah. And um, so I figured that was the end of it. You know, I figured mm -hmm. that was the end of Catherine. That was the end of Bobby. We went off in a blaze of glory, right, you know. Right. And, uh, were you, and you were okay with that? For personal oh, yeah. and professional oh, yeah. reasons. I was, yeah. I was fine with it. I was yeah. starting my family. I was, mm -hmm. you know, doing other things. So, yeah. yeah, it was fine. That, I have to say, you know, uh, again, uh, Chris at Dallas Decoder, who is, is on a mission to, uh, he's writing individual critiques of every single episode of <laughs> oh, Dallas. Yeah. He's, he's an amazing writer and he's got an encyclopedic knowledge. But um, he's, he wrote and he said, you know, Swan Song is his all-time favorite episode. Yeah. And uh, you might have already answered some of this, but um, he's curious about, about how involved you were in those scenes. I mean, it sounds like the the the, uh, the stunt shot of, mm -hmm. of the running mm -hmm. down of Bobby was done on location. Right, it was. And and I assume that you weren't. No, in no, that no. Car. In fact, that was a that was a a guy driving the, the guy, car, a stunt sure, guy sure. that my husband knew. So oh, he goes, "Hey, I'm doubling your wife, I think." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Did so. you did you shoot your scene in the car right there, or did they do that elsewhere? They did it on the set on the lot at MGM. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. they just did it on the lot. Now, and I remember hearing you say, um, and I thought this was really interesting, because now TV's gotten so graphic. Yeah. Um, but at the time, Catherine's death was pretty graphic. It was the way that they yeah, shot it, it was. and and maybe could you speak a little bit about that? I know that there was there was a question over the eyes yes. being open. Yes, yes, there yeah. was back back uh, in the eighties and probably the early nineties. We had CBS and and most of the networks had standards and practices, mm -hmm. and standards and practices was a department that would would look at your scripts and they'd look at everything and they they'd say, okay, this is acceptable mm -hmm. for uh, you know family viewing whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not too over the top, it's not too graphic, it's not too sexual, whatever. Mm -hmm. And standards and practices basically said that if you're going to do a graphic death scene, you know, you got to have your eyes closed so it's not too jarring mm -hmm. for the public. And uh, I remember Lenny Katzman directed me because when they pull my head back mm -hmm. and the wig falls off, the first time we did it, my eyes were closed and he said let's just do it this way and then he said but I want to do it with your eyes open he said your eyes are what people are going to remember mm -hmm. because that's what they remember about you on this show mm -hmm. and he said can you do it can you completely just you know not focus on anything mm -hmm. 
And he said, are you able to do that? And I said, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Because I had played in The Outer Limits. I'd played a blind girl where oh. I, I had to, you know, mm -hmm. not, focus not focus on anything. So I pulled that from, my, from the archives. <laughs> right. And uh, we did that with my eyes open. And Lenny went, that's it. He said, we have to use that because that is so effective. And it really was. Absolutely. I mean, it was really that, effective. That scene is, that scene, is still watching it today. Yeah, it's disturbing. It's disturbing. To see, yeah. And it's But they, they didn't know, you know, whether standards would let it pass, but, mm -hmm. but they did. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, that they made the right choice. It, it was, but it was very jarring. It yeah. was, because but you were right. Back then, they, they didn't do all that much, you know. And you hadn't seen that on Dallas. No. Nothing no. like that. I mean, I think uh -huh. that that adds so much gravity to that whole yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. Victoria Principal did an amazing job. She in that did an episode. amazing I, job. Yeah, I know she did. That still wrecks me. Sometimes yeah. when I oh watch that. Oh my gosh, I know it. That, that work I know. Amazing, that was so. such an intense episode. Mm -hmm. It really was. And um, yeah, it, it, it really ended the season. Like, just people were just shell shocked. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They really were. Um, going back for a minute, um, that, so prior to, the, to that, that was the year you were juggling both. You, you'd yeah. done your four seasons, yeah. four episodes of Dallas, you'd gone to Glitter. Right. Um, and we were talking earlier and you kind of compared the experience of Glitter versus Dallas. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm kind of curious about that. I mean, number one, you were in a leading role. You were, you were the lead. Yes. So that, that in, in and of itself changed your experience in terms mm -hmm. of demands mm -hmm. on you. But what was it like, the, the, uh, the spelling versus working over at Dallas? It was just, it, it was two different worlds. Yeah. It really was. Uh, Laura Marr was much more money conscious. Mm -hmm. They were, they were a lot, you know, they, they, they based everything on a smaller budget. They just had a different money mindset. Mm -hmm. Aaron Spelling, you'd go and work for Aaron and money was no object. I mean, it was literally, uh, like I told you before, if, if you were doing a scene and you had to be eating dinner and it was supposed to be lobster bisque in the bowl, there was lobster bisque in the bowl. <laughs> it wasn't tomato soup or whatever. Right. Because Aaron said, you are going to know as an actor that that's real, that that's, that's who you are. And, and the clothes, I mean, down to everything, you know, Nolan Miller would make or design or, I mean, everything was done to perfection. Money was no object. And then you'd go back to Dallas and it was <laughs> like, you know, you're in your little, you're in your little dressing room that's in the hallway of the alley, you know, <laughs> and we're over on Aaron's show. You had a huge motorhome, right, you know, right. so it was, it was just a totally different, different yeah. you know, whole different mindset. I mean, I guess I understand where they were coming from, but toward the end of my run, they were getting to the point where they were swapping clothes around mm -hmm. from Falcon Crest to Knott's Landing. <laughs> so they'd, they'd hold something and go, this is Donna Mills suit. You want to wear this this week? <laughs> it's like, so I no don't know. Notice. Yeah, hopefully nobody will notice, but it was kind of interesting. Oh, that's great. It's just interesting. And, and um, I think, the, was the only other actor that crossed over, was it Timothy Patrick Murphy that went, did, we was he was in Dallas. Glitter, yes. He was in Glitter, yes, yeah, he yeah. was. And I don't think on Dallas your paths really ever crossed, right? Uh, if, if we remember, did, it would have been at one of the big one events. Of the big party scenes yeah. or something. Yeah. But, um, but uh, any, any memories oh, of working with Timmy, him? Oh, Timmy, Timmy, uh, when he passed away, it hit me so hard because this was a, the most truly gentle, sweet person you would ever want to meet. Mm. Ever want to meet. I mean, I, it just, it, it broke my heart. It really did. It broke yeah. my heart. I, yeah. I, I, he was, I don't know. yeah, he was he, such a great character on Dallas. Yeah. And uh, I think he was well loved. I think he was such a fan favorite. Oh, he was. And watching Lu was. Lucy's arc. Yeah. You know, yeah. we all wanted her to get a nice guy. You I know. know. And he was I one. Know. And then, you know, I know. Uh, Holly Hardwood ruined that. And yeah, so, well. So, <laughs> So, at least it wasn't me, yeah, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> at least yes, it wasn't me. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we exactly. had so much fun. We, we had a great time on Glitter, too. Now, that was another fun show yeah. that we did together, which was really great. Yeah. Do you want to stop for a second? No, I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. okay. It just it hits I'm sorry, me hard. Didn't, yeah, I didn't mean to. No, it, mm -hmm. I, had, I hadn't thought of Timmy in a while, and it just, it's great. He yeah. was just great. 
yeah, I just thought it was an interesting point that both of you kind of did yeah both. that we yeah. went that yeah. we went off and did another show. Yeah, I know yeah, it. exactly. I know it. Yeah. How did uh, one question I have is in, in terms of glitter? It sounds like you had worked for Aaron Spelling before yes, earlier in your yes. career. Yes, I did. It, even as a child, I did. I okay. did the original Burke's Law. Okay. Okay. Way, way back in the '60s. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you already he he knew who you he were. He knew me. Yeah. 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 And so. Mm -hmm. uh, he and he probably liked your work in Dallas. I would assume. Yeah, well. we had a. We've always had an uh, incredible relationship. We yeah. really have. He's, Leonard, he's okay. a wonderful, wonderful guy. He and uh, Leonard Goldberg too. Yeah. Two of them together. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Glitter was a lot of fun. It was, glitter was fun. It, it, glitter was fun. We just pulled a terrible time slot. You know, yeah. we did. We pulled. Uh, you know, we were ABC and we were up against. Um, Magnum P.I. on CBS and The Cosby Show <laughs> on NBC. We pulled a horrible time yeah, slot and it just killed us, you yeah. know. So, what can you do? Yeah, and that was, the, that was the year of the ABC bloodbath. I mean, they literally, they canceled everything. They're just trying to compete. Yeah, because yeah. Morgan Fairchild had a show on at that time called Paper Dolls. That's right. And Paper Dolls got axed too, and it was a good show, yeah. you know, so. That's yeah. it. It, that, there was so much good TV on in the, that mid-80s you know, period. Really good I mean, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it, that has held up over time and become like classic television. I wish they'd run Glitter somewhere. You know, yeah. they, we did 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, some of the stars that we had on there, I mean, it was, it was just phenomenal. People would probably love to see that. Well, Aaron you know? Spelling had seemed to really... Uh, leverage kind of old Hollywood actors, oh, and even he if in did. cameos, you know, either as walk-ons or cameo, whatever. Yeah, he did. Uh, but see, he admi he admired and respected old stars mm -hmm. and and people from early Hollywood. He did. He admired them so much, and he did. He felt that's why everyone was treated like a star. Everyone. And you knew if you were going to work on an Aaron Spelling show that when you got to your dressing room, when you got to your motor home, you had a bouquet of flowers, you had silver service, you had everything you could possibly want. Mm -hmm. He treated every, Ann Miller, Sid Charisse, Ginger Rogers, they were treated like the stars they were. Wow. And it was such a joy to work for someone like that. Mm -hmm. It really was because so many people, as time went on, they forgot who these people were. Mm -hmm. They forgot who they were. It's mm -hmm. like, do you know who this is? Exactly. We worked with Ruby Keeler one day. Oh she, Ruby Keeler did an episode of Glitter, and most of the extras didn't know who she was. You know, mm -hmm. it was this lady with a cane and everything. And I said, do you not know who that <laughs> is? You know, do you not know? And no, I don't know who that is. And once I told him, it's like, oh, are you serious? It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's a legend. That, I love that about Aaron Spelling in many of his productions. He he, oh, he leveraged yeah. kind of older Hollywood stars he and brought did. them back. And That's, that was his formula for doing all those shows. Dallas didn't seem to do quite as much of it, but you did have, you had uh, Howard Keel. Absolutely. You had uh, Alexis Smith. That's right. You That's had Barbara right. Balgettis, of course. That's right. Um, yeah. I, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you got a lot of scenes with them. But would, but did you get to, to to play with them sometimes? I mean, did you? Did Barbara, you I I did not have much interaction with Barbara except mm -hmm. during the big, you know, the barbecue scenes and right. everything. But she was very charming, very yeah. nice lady. Howard, I loved. Howard yeah. and I would sit on set because a lot of times our our scenes would overlap where we'd be in the same kind of set mm -hmm. and so I'd be on and then he'd be coming in later and we'd talk about old Hollywood oh, and he'd yeah. come in and one of our sound stages at MGM was where he had shot one of his big Hollywood musicals oh, back okay. in the you know back in the glory days mm -hmm. and he said yeah I remember this sound stage you know and I just thought that is just awesome you know I said little did you know Howard that you'd be back <laughs> you'd be here back. doing doing a television show and he just he loved Dallas he loved working on Dallas he every day it was a joy for him to come to work and he kept telling he, he would tell me all the time he goes I thank Lenny Katzman every day for this opportunity because people thought he was long gone mm -hmm. you know and look at him he was he just what a comeback. Absolutely. You know? And and what a challenge for him to come in after Jim Davis. Exactly. I mean that was no I that was know. no easy task, I'm I sure. Know. And exactly. and yet he created a character and owned it. He and did. Became beloved, you know. 
he by, did. by fans. Yep. And it was great to see him on screen again for people that knew him for yeah, his earlier was. years.